So this is the, the little piece that we tied on the frame. I've untied that now. I've moved everything down. This is where we started. So now there's a gap and I'm just going to weave two more, um, two more strands through it just to make it a little bit tighter before we take it off. We're going to cast off the, the top part of the frame. Here we have the the length that's left. I've, I've put an extra two rows through here. So you start off with the last nail opposite end to the tail. You take that off, you take the next one off, and then you put the, the second one through the first one, like so. And then you just walk yourself along that row. Always the second one through the first one. And you get a nice finish at the top. See how nice that look? It's like a like a plait, and it'll look very similar to the crochet that we're going to round, do around the edges eventually. Mm -hmm. So now when we come to the end of the row, we just just going to pull this tail through and secure it. Now it's happened before, I've lost I've forgotten one little loop, then you just go back, but here I haven't. These are still not very tight, but that's okay later. You can either put an extra roll of, of the plastic through there or crochet it, so that will be fine. So now we've finished this edge. Now we're going to move the whole thing up. So just take the bottom ones of the, the nail. So we'll move that up. And now we're going to put the these tails over it again in the same uh, in the same order they were before so we'll put one here first one and I've added another one on here so eventually this will be three or four lengths um, originally because I'm pretty new to all this this is only the second one I've ever made um, it's all trial and error but the first one I made by um, building a big frame four by six which was great so there was nothing to uh, to hold it uh, to uh, and wouldn't have any seams but the frame is so big to transport I usually take this to my church group so it's got to go in the car and unless you have a truck it's going to be difficult so again you do exactly the same with these you put them over the nails and uh, on one end until all this is done. Sometimes they get a bit tight, um, but that's fine. And then put the, 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 the other tails on until it's all done again. And then you can start again with the second part of the weaving. And see how lovely it looks with those pretty colors in there? Oh, lovely. When you start again, put, put the knot over the nail so this is tight. And then sometimes on the on the bottom part, it doesn't quite fit over the nail because the nail is here and the knot is here. So what you can do is put it like this and then just tie this, wind it round a couple of times so it's tight. And then we'll put the, the, plastic, the elastic band over it again. It's gone. There we are. And that will hold it in place. Because it's you know sometimes it gets a bit too tight when you when you put the extra ones on, but then you have you can start working again. All right. 
The good thing about this method is that you don't really see the joint. You see a little bit, you can see the, the knots here where, where the, the two pieces of plastic going this way have been joined. And they're, they're the odd gap here and there. But that's easily done. You can just move the whole lot down as I've done before. Um, and it's much nicer looking than when you crochet these things together. And I will be moving them all down again a bit more once I've loosened the, the third part of the, the plastic loops and put the last and fourth part on. Then before I do that, I'll move everything down and then it will look the same way that it will look here. I've, I've woven another two, two pieces through, but these are all quite movable. Okay, so here is the, the last of the, this is number two frame. We're now working on the third frame and the loops are there for the fourth and last frame. Um, as you can see, we, we've got a few gaps here, but it's difficult to weave on the wood. So that's okay. Once we move those loops onto this frame, um, we can move all this over and then that will cover it. And in the end, we'll go up there and, um, and finish off. Okay, stop that a minute. Okay, here's my friend Betty just brought me more bags. <laughs> so another load of, of working material. Okay. The, some bags are really stiff, like this is very stiff. So I only cut this into a one and a half inch uh, thick strip I've used there. Because otherwise it's too... too thick and bulky. Some of these pink ones, this is also quite stiff and it's not quite the way I would have liked it. So um, it's just trial and error how wide you can do them. This one is a little softer, so I've cut this at two inches. Um, and that I think is quite a good color. Because it's so hard to get nicely colored bags, I, I use these very sparingly just for a little bit of color here and there. And I get quite excited when I get a new color. So. But it still works out okay with, with the weaving. This goes quite well with the green. And then you just move them all along and watch it grow. These are some of the bags that I've used in this latest project. Um, some are thicker than others, and you can, when you feel it, you can tell they are thick. And so I've tried different sizes. This one is best in a half inch or three quarter inch, but it works in both. The best buys are s slightly thinner and more giveable, so they're okay in an inch and a half, as is Jimboree. Um Those are really just ordinary bags like any old grocery bag so um, probably I'll cut those into two each bag so that's about six and a half inches like normally and then this one was a um, soil from a soil bag for the garden they're nice long strips I had to wash it very well but um, it looks good and I think the next ones will probably be cut into a, a thinner strip like a maximum an inch or three quarters of an inch. And then I usually, when I've cut them all, I keep them in one of these salad boxes. They're see-through and it keeps them all together. And and then the bigger ones I keep in the in these boxes from the dollar shop for a dollar. So it's easier if you cut all your materials in one go and then just go to it rather than having to cut it every for every row that you do. So how about a bag, fold and cut get together so you can get all your raw material done. Get your friends over, watch your favourite movie and have a party. So panel three is now complete. So you see the gap between panel two and three and then the gap between three and what's going to be four. So once we take all these off the nails, I can pull on the vertical ears and move the whole lot down a bit and then we can have a bigger gap rather than two small gaps to weave and that will be much easier before we put the fourth panel on. So now I'm filling the last few holes here and the last few gaps 
and you can see this um, they go together so then you put another one through so it's again the up and over so then it looks like that and you can't see the seam or the join so that's great <laughs>